Let me just slap this sail down right here. It looks good. And time to hit the seas on my new sloop. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 No, God, please, no! 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 What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another iShot Gamer's Guide, where I'm gonna show you how not to fuck up like I did. Luckily, this was just a sloop, but it took me less than an hour to rebuild two more. But if this had been any of the larger, more material intensive ships, like a brigantine or a galleon, this could have been really bad. So let's get learnt so you don't have to waste any of your precious time nuking your own ships in Atlas. This is the deployment of that small dry dock. You would think it would not allow you to place it anywhere that's not deep enough for the ship to deploy, but that does not seem to be the case. You can see me deploy it here, and I should have noticed that really shallow spot under it, but I really wasn't paying attention. This was my first dry dock, and I was more focused on figuring out its mechanics and building. A nice tip is you can use the keyboard shortcut letter K to switch to a third person camera that will allow you to zoom way out, much farther than the regular third person. Once you begin the ship's production, it'll add all kinds of scaffold and ship framing so you really won't be able to see underneath it once it's started. Make sure you place the dry dock and inspect the water where the ship will be released. That way, in a worst case scenario, you can demolish the dry dock, get half of your materials back, and replace it in a better position. So that tip is universal to building any ship that requires a dry dock. The rest of this video we're going to take a look at building the sloop specifically, the amount of materials it takes, what sails seem to be best, and customizing your ship. To build a sloop you'll first need a smithy and a loom and a few other skills required to build the small shipyard and small ship parts. On the first page of the survivalism skills you will need the basic tools of the trade from the top row, then construction from the second row, and advanced tools from the third row. After unlocking construction and mercantilism, you'll need the basics of building from the top row, weaving from the second row, secrets of building from the fourth row, and seamanship from the seventh row. You can skip other rows to get to these as you see here. This will unlock the seamanship specialization on the top, and you'll need basics of sailing from the first row, shipwright from the third row, which unlocks small shipyard, sloop, small wood ship deck, small wood plank, ship steering wheel, bucket, and small handling sail. Now you could just use two small handling sails. But I went ahead and also learned small speed sail from the fifth row, and then I placed one small speed sail and one small handling sail, as well as tested with two small speed sails, but I did not try to test two small handling sails. Now once you have all these skills learned, and you've crafted both a smithy and a loom, we can get started building all the parts. The first thing we'll need to do is go into the smithy, select structures, shipyard, small, and craft a small shipyard. This will cost 240 fiber, 105 stone, 420 thatch and 840 wood. Next you will go and place your shipyard in the water. Specifically to make sure that we place it where our ship will release into deep enough water it will not explode. And once you've done that and double check to make sure the water is deep enough underneath it then you can go and look at the structure and press E to open its crafting menu. Here you will see the option to start crafting a sloop. To do this, you'll need 120 fiber, 12 metal, 220 thatch, and 140 wood inside the small shipyard structure. Once you do that, it'll take 5 to 10 minutes to craft the ship base that you will then apply all of the deck, small planks, and sail parts to properly deploy your completed sloop. Now for the sake of keeping this video as short as possible, as I show where to craft each part, I will then slap it on the ship in the background so we can cover it all quickly. So let's get started crafting and assembling the ship parts. Your sloop will require one deck. 12 small planks, a steering wheel, and two sails. You could probably complete it with one sail and less of the other parts, but it's really cheap and easy, so I don't see any reason to build a half-baked ship. We're in it to win it. For the steering wheel, you'll need 14 fiber, 18 thatch, and 40 wood. For the deck, you'll need 40 fiber, 120 thatch, and 80 wood. For all 12 planks, you'll need 960 fiber, 840 thatch, and 960 wood. You also need six wooden ceilings to cover the hole in the floor. I like to make at least one of them a hatch, assuming that we might need it to bail out water from below if it's damaged, and also because it's funny you can hide somebody down there. For all six ceilings, you'll need 120 fiber, 360 thatch, and 240 wood. The last thing you're going to need are the two sails. I think that one small speed sail and one handling sail is best. The handling sail will be able to catch wind a little easier when it's not in your favor, where the two speed sails might leave you dead in the water if you're unlucky with the wind. Sail materials are as follows. A small speed sail will be 128 fiber, 35 hide, and 120 wood. A small handling sail is 128 fiber, 35 hide, and 120 wood. Now you can also add all kinds of additional structures to your boat like walls, hatches, ladders, window port walls, chests for storing foods and goods, fireplaces to keep you warm out in the cold ocean, beds, and so on. 
but I'm just gonna give you the total materials needed for the basic ship as we described. Anything else you wanna add is up to you to figure out how much materials you'll need, but I would definitely recommend a bed at the very least so you can respawn on your boat if you die. The materials needed for the basic boat and dry dock alone are 1,750 fiber, 105 stone, 1,978 thatch, 2,540 wood, 12 metal, and 70 hide. I leave that up for a second so you can screenshot or whatever you want to do to prep for your build. I want to say again though, I highly recommend a bed on the boat and maybe a chest with an extra set of weapons and gear to retrieve your corpse if you happen to meet an unfortunate fate while exploring. And with that, we have ourselves a ship. Deploy time! Thank God it didn't explode. I also built a third ship to test double speed sails as well as playing with some different customization on it. As you see here you can add wooden walls and a really cool thing about Atlas is the same walls that you would use in your house have a different skin and look when you use them on a ship. Walls have these awesome portholes and circle windows, the doors are rounded as well, you can make banisters and many other models that have unique looks when used on a ship versus houses. Once you get out into the ocean and start using your ship it will level up and you can begin putting points into specific ship skills to improve it. Additional weight adds more maximum weight capacity to the ship while reducing the weight's effect on its speed. Sturdiness reduces sinking rate and reduces the rate of offshore item spoiling and character vital depletion. Additional crew increases the total number of passengers allowed on the ship to control cannons, man sails, defend your ship, and so on. And lastly, accommodations adds more beds, improves crew anchored automatic hull repairing speed, and reduces overall crew payment amount. Now ships in Atlas are not like many other games where you just hop in and press forward to move. Ships will only move once you raise the sails and rotate them correctly so they catch wind. And the speed of your movement is determined by raising or lowering your sails in 10% increments to catch more or less wind. If the wind changes or you turn in a direction no longer putting wind in your sails, your ship will stop. You can also raise or lower your sails 100%. That's it everyone. With your newfound knowledge, you're ready to go out and explore the vast seas and new lands. Let me know what other things you want to know in the comments so I can include those details in my next larger shipbuilding and sailing videos. Thanks everyone. If this video helped you out, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Your support allows me to keep making videos and help you dominate Atlas. See you on the high seas.